The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Hey, Bunny, guess what? What? Guess. Um, pancreatic swizzle sticks. No, my top-hatted co-conspirator. Do you hear that, NSA? He's my co-conspirator. He gets 50% of all of the blame. This show is for fun. all of this. I heard Just you. to be clear. It's homework time once again on the Pope on Film podcast. Yes. <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Refrain from trolling and pay attention! <laughs> Each week, the shadowy Council of Maxwell's chooses a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. <laughs> a piece of homework designed, ratified, and fortified to better the show's listeners, nay, bearded men everywhere. Yes. Except for you, David Letterman. Yeah. You prospector's bean catcher off of your face. You look a fool, sir. He looks like he just came back to civilization from the mountain he ran away to. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he looks like he he looks like uh He, he looks like he looks like he killed a bar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He he looks like what's the name of those two the, the it, He looks like either a McCoy or a Hatfield. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm not sure which one, but he looks like one of them. Yes, he, he looks does. like I'm quitting. I'm quitting my show so that I can make moonshine. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what he looks like. It's ridiculous. I'm sorry, I got distracted. This week, our homework assignment is centered around a face. A face. This is the reason why this week's homework assignment was chosen. It was chosen because of a face. Now, give me a minute to try and explain this here. Yes, please. Okay. When a John Cena hits a Randy Orton, you know what? You know what? Let, let, me, let me modernize that. Um, when a Jinder Mahal uh, hits a Finn Balor. Oh, wait. I forgot. The majority of Americans haven't watched wrestling this century. <laughs> Let me rewind that. Let me rewind it back, way, way back. When an Owen Hart hits an Al Snow. Yes. I think that's the, the last time that people actually cared about wrestling. When an Owen Hart hits an Al Snow, these bad actors paint on their faces a fake face of pain. The same yes. face that I would make if I'm play fighting with Maxwell. Like, oh, Maxwell comes up to me, Daddy, let's lucha. And I go, okay, I'll lucha you. And mm -hmm. he pretends to hit me in the stomach. And I go, ooh. And I make this fake face of pain on my face. Oh. Or, oh, that hurts so much. Yes. I'm trying to sell the move. I'm trying to sell the move, which is what wrestlers do. Wrestlers sell the move. And they've got this fake face that they paint on themselves when they are selling the move. Oh! But I guarantee you that that fake face that they are painting on themselves that is in no way the face that they would make if, say, they stepped on a goddamn Lego at 1am. Yes. So the fake face that they oh, don't... Oh, so now you want to lucha me? Okay, they, great timing, but let's let's try and stay on topic, Maxwell. I appreciate the fact that you're staying in the box, though. Um, you step on a goddamn Lego at 1 a.m. in the morning, you're going to be making a real face of pain and not the fake face that you put on yourself when you're trying to step when you're trying to sell a move, or mm -hmm. say stepping on broken glass in the kitchen. Yes. You make this face, and it's 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 like a baby's face of sadness and pain. And also, I am a magnet for broken glass. I'm not sure why. Yeah. 
But literally, this is what happens. My wife accidentally breaks a glass and she goes, oh, God, OK, no one go into the kitchen. No one go into the kitchen. If you come into the kitchen, put on shoes for a week. You have to have shoes if you go into the kitchen. Now I'm going to sweep. OK, I've swept. I'm uh-huh. going to sweep again. OK, I've swept. OK, I'm going to sweep a third time. OK, I have swept. And I got the, the dust pan and everything, and I'm sweeping, and I'm sweeping, and it's more sweeping than I've ever done. Okay, now I'm going to scrub the floor. I'm going to get down on all fours, and I'm going to scrub it and scrub it clean so you can eat off of it. Now that I've done scrubbing it, I'm going to sweep it again. Yes. And I'm sweep, and I'm sweeping. And after like 30 sweeps, she finally says, okay, I'm done. And then I walk into the kitchen, and five seconds later, I am bleeding from the foot. Nice. I'm not sure not, how this not, happened. Nice, not nice. Hashtag yeah, ni- yeah. nice, not nice. Yeah. Uh, apparently, my two s- superpowers are my foot is a glass magnet, and I can make pens not work. Those are my two yes. superpowers. Mm-hmm. Like, literally, the army came in. An army recruiter came into the store and brought us 30 red, white, and blue army pens. Uh huh. And I'm like, cool army pens. And I immediately made five of them break. <laughs> I'm like, cool army pens. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna use my. I'm gonna use this army pen to write my podcast notes, and that pen's not working. I'm gonna use this army pen to that one's not working. I'm gonna use this army pen to. Okay, this sucks. Okay, I'm gonna use this army pen to. Okay, I'm gonna stop. Steve, stop ruining the pens. I'm not ruining the pens. They're new pens. I'm gonna use this army pen to. Okay, I'm not using these army pens anymore. See, uh, okay, since you brought up pens, I need to ask you a question. And these army pens, just being army pens, I would imagine they're the clicker kinds. Yes. With the little metal piece so you can clip it to your pocket. Yes. Okay. How often do you take a pen apart and put it back together? You know, play with the spring for a little while. You know, the pieces that go into the metal clicker part. And more importantly, do you still feel like you're the only one who knows how to do this? I used to take pens apart a lot when I was still on the book floor. Yeah. You know, I'm in charge of kids. I'm back there by myself. I'm waiting for customers to come in. No one is coming in. Uh, I'm going to take this pen apart. I'm going to build things with uh, with um, uh, paper clips. I'm going to uh, play with the stapler. I would do yeah. that a lot. I would play with the stapler. Did you ever time yourself putting the pen back together? No. Like you're no, reassembling a gun? Yeah. No, hmm. I, I, I just that. I just find it I just find it very satisfying taking a pen apart and putting it back together. And since people don't usually talk about taking pens apart and putting them back together, that little satisfaction comes from the idea that I kind of still feel like I'm the only one who knows. I'm the only one who knows how to take a pen apart and put it back together. Oh, that's good. That's yeah. good. At least you got that going for you. Yeah. I, I don't so, usually say it out loud because it's yeah. ridiculous and stupid. You know, yeah, it's yeah. a very Trumpian thing to think. Yeah, yeah, like, you're like the only making one. up, like making up the word fake. Yeah, pens. I'm the only one who knows how to work pens. I'm the first one to ever use the word fake. Nobody used yeah. to use the word fake until until I started. Yeah, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so what I'm saying is, there is a big difference between a fake painful face and a real painful face, mm-hmm. and that you know, a real painful face is when there's an actual pain, not that you just got hit on the back with a steel chair and you're yeah. gonna oh sell the move, oh that hurts so much. No, mm-hmm. a real pain like someone kicks you in the balls really hard. Or you step on broken glass in the kitchen. Or say someone actually throws you into actual barbed wire Mm -hmm. and you make the same face Eleanor makes when she doesn't get breast milk. (laughs) 
Mm-hmm. That brings us to this week's homework, part one of the four-part, five-hour-long end of season three of Lucha Underground, a big event known as Ultima Lucha Trace. Mm-hmm. Finally, the Pope on Film podcast finally gets around to talking about Lucha Underground. We never have. No. We never have. It's been a secret that we just kept between ourselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... Every week brings a brand new conflicting report about the future of Lucha Underground. Yes. So prospects of season four are dim. The next week, some exec says that uh, all signs look good, but they're just waiting on logistics and and, and to to dot I's and cross T's. Then next week, news story is about how all the wrestlers have moved on to other jobs. Then an unnamed source next week is says that they're preparing season four as we speak. The last I heard is that if, and it's a big if, if they do in fact come back with a season four, they will have a much, much, much less money than they did before. And as a result, any possible season four would more than likely look drastically different from the Lucha Underground that I know and love. Mm -hmm. I guess it would be the difference between... Uh, actual production value and then watching any episode of ring of honor. Yes. I guess it would be the difference between watching an episode of supernatural and watching an episode of the original ECW. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's basically what the difference would be between season three and a possible season four. So I'm in a weird position because I really do want more Lucha Underground. I've been a fan since the beginning. But if the quality will drop dramatically from season three to season four, maybe it's best if I sadly just take a deep breath and say goodbye now. Yeah. You know, in fact, you've been you've been hurt before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In fact, I just downloaded the two-hour season finale of Lucha Underground and possibly the series finale, and I, I'm in I'm in a a Facebook group of Lucha Underground fans, and like I I woke up Wednesday and I'm like, oh hey, Lucha Underground's on tonight. I'm gonna have to try and download that whenever it becomes available. And let me and uh, yeah, I'm not really worried about it. I'm sure I'm sure this won't be the end. Let me go on Facebook and suddenly I see. Guys, this is probably the last Lucha Underground we'll ever see in our lives. <laughs> what was your favorite moment? And I'm like, God damn it! No! no! I just lost someone close to me. I can't yeah. lose Lucha! Yeah. So I we literally finished watching it about 20 minutes before we started the podcast. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Bella and I were very emotional and it's difficult because, and I think I've talked about this before on the show, the end of season one ends on a big, uh, on like 10 different big, massive cliffhangers specifically because they weren't sure if they would be coming back for another season. So they figured chances were better that they would come back if they left a bunch of unanswered questions. Yes. So the ending of season one is just batshit insane. But then they film season two and season three um, at the same time. So the end of season two is just, eh, here you go. Mm-hmm. Here's the end of season two. We're not going to make a big to do about the end of season two because we already know we're continuing to, to we're going to do season three. We're going to immediately start filming it. Yes. So the end of, of, of season three is just, a, it, it's difficult. There's still so many unanswered questions, and, and, and yeah, it doesn't look good. So for homework this week, we watched part one of the four-part, five-hour Lucha Underground season three finale, Ultima Lucha Trace. Mm-hmm. Each season ends with an ultimate with an Ultima Lucha, like a WrestleMania type event. The yeah. first one aired in two parts. During summer of 2005. Uh, I'm sorry, 2015. 2015. 2015 was when the first Ultima Lucha uh, aired and it was in two parts. And then Ultima Lucha Dos was a three-parter. So for Ultima Lucha Trace, they went with a four-parter. And then the last part is two hours. So it was a big, huge, massive to-do. I specifically remember watching... uh, the first Ultima Lucha during summer of 2015. I remember it because of personal reasons. 2014 and 2015 were really bad for Natasha and I. We were fighting a lot. We yeah. weren't sure if we were going to continue 
as a couple. And when 2008, 2014 specifically, I wasn't 100% sure I was going to continue to be living in this house. Yeah. But then when 2015... I remember that. Yeah. But then when 2015 rolled around, everything was just different and we were becoming friends again and we were really liking each other more as people. And she would, you know, occasionally just stop and go, you're a good guy. And I didn't realize that. And I'm lucky to have you and and this and that. And so one day she just said, I'm going out with a bunch of friends and we're going drinking. And and she and I said, OK, have fun with that. I'm going to stay home and just watch lucha underground yeah it's the last episode and i'm really emotional about it and i watched it by myself and i was drinking like crazy and it ended at like 1 a.m and and i finally watched it the last bit of ultima lucha and watched the big cliffhanger and i was really upset and i'm just man that was really upsetting and i was so worked up that i couldn't go to sleep and so i'm like oh man i'm all hyped up what am i gonna do now and then like clockwork once I once I finished the episode and once I realized I was all hyper and what am I going to do, I get a call and it's my wife and I go, hey, honey, what are you doing? And she's like, what are you doing? Okay. And I said, well, I just finished watching Ultima Lucha and I'm pretty emotional. And she says, are you going to bed? And I, and I said, well, that's weird. I was just thinking that I'm so hyper I can't go to bed. And she goes, good, I'm picking you up. Okay. So 20 minutes later, she picks me up and it's like 1.15 in the morning. And I go, what about the kids? And, and she says, well, it, it's just, it's just Emerald, Amber, Bella and Bella Maxwell sleeping over at Nana and Papa's house. Yeah. So, so it, those three never wake up. They're going to stay asleep. Everything's fine. Uh, Eleanor doesn't exist yet. Yeah. So, uh, just come with me. We're going someplace. And so I just got in the van and I brought a few beers with me cause that's what she asked for. And next thing you know, like 20 minutes later, I didn't realize there was a Shawnee Lake. Okay. I'd never been there before. I had no idea. I don't, apparently I don't drive around Shawnee a lot cause there's a freaking lake and there's a dock and the dock leads to the middle of the lake where there's like a shack and you uh-huh. can go in the shack and the shack just has like a kind of like a like a like a level in a Legend of Zelda dungeon. Like there's no middle to it. There's mm-hmm. just more water so that you can go into the shack and fish and and you can even go fishing when it's like. December or January because it's you know this is like an enclosed little spot that doesn't freeze up and yeah. so you just go into this shack and fish and so she apparently just likes to go there my wife told me she likes to go there sometimes when she's alone or by herself and so she took me to her special spot and we stayed there for like an hour or two and just talked about her relationship and how much we like each other yes nice and so whenever I think of Ultima Lucha, the first Ultima Lucha, I, I think, wow, that was the time when, like, Natasha and I turned it around, you know? Nice. Yeah. It's really sweet. I have some pictures from that event, from that from that moment, like these really weird, bizarre, grainy pictures of, like, the dark and my wife walking on a dock. And it's like, no one else knows what the fuck these pictures are, yeah. but this means a lot to me. So... So they filmed season two and three together. So it's difficult to comprehend because Ultima Lucha three just aired. Literally, it aired last night. Yeah. But it was recorded in June of 2016. Oh, yeah. The- yeah. Yeah. OK. They, they filmed it in the in summer of last year. That's a long time to not be recording new episodes. Imagine if you're a wrestler. Imagine if you're a wrestler in Lucha Underground and people are asking you, oh, when are you going to do episodes? When are you going to do more episodes? When are you going to do more episodes? And like uh, Taya, the, she's the she's the real life fiance of Johnny Mundo. And she's a really big in season two and see, definitely season three of Lucha Underground. Yeah. They asked her recently in an interview, like, what are your thoughts on season three? What can you tell us about season three? And uh, she said, the way that you fans feel are the same way that we feel. We, is she the, is she not, the 
Is she the blonde with the fringy boots? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I hated her for the longest time, but then she had a match in season three with Jeremiah Crane, yeah. and and it it was a bloody nasty match, and literally, as opposed to a lot of other matches where it's a guy wrestling a girl, yeah, and you 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 say to yourself, oh, the guy's really selling the moves, the guy's really trying to put over the woman. No, Taya kicked his ass, and for real. And yeah. and and like like I like Bella and I were watching that match together and I was like, oh, my God, I really like Taya now because literally this guy's like six foot tall and incredibly athletic. But Taya kicked his ass <laughs> and not like a like a like a like a, a, a woman fighting a guy and a guy's pretending to have his ass beat. Oh, no, she was bloody and she just kept coming at him. And I was really impressed. So I really like her. And she literally said. We don't know anything. We haven't taped for a year, and we are hoping to come back. And we keep hearing things, but but basically, the wrestlers are in the same boat as you. We know nothing, and we hope to do more. Mm-hmm. And and we still could if they need us, but we know nothing. Yeah. So that's that's really I, upsetting. Yeah, I I did not even mention this week's homework to Jeannie because she yeah. just does not like wrestling. Uh, and, and and this match was gorier than it, any of the films we've watched this month. It is, it is. Yeah, it is. I loved it. Yes. <laughs> but this episode is a good one. It starts with famous being Tejano. Tejano is a huge star in Mexico. Yeah. He is the youngest champion ever, and he also held the championship longer than any other person in Mexican wrestling history so he is huge so it was a big deal to have tejano come into lucha underground but then once he came into lucha underground lucha, the lucha underground people realized oh shit nobody knows who this guy is yeah we thought he would be more of a draw it's like if they got john cena and brought him into like japanese wrestling but japanese people are like who the fuck is john cena yeah so in the beginning, Tejano was like this big deal in Lucha Underground, but now it's season three and like they have no idea what the fuck to do with him. Yeah. So he has this tiny little throwaway match in the beginning, but it doesn't matter because the real meat of this is Killshot versus Dante Fox yes. in a best of three match that they call the Hell of War. And each of the three matches has a different stipulation. The first match is a first blood match. And of course, I felt that Dante Fox had the... it it. It was at a disadvantage there because what if kill shots kill shot starts bleeding in his face they'll never freaking know that because he wears a freaking mask yeah but um the second match is no disqualification and the third one was basically an ambulance match mm-hmm. uh but it was like a like a i don't know like a medical evac match or whatever it's it's all war themed because their storyline was Killshot showed up first. He was some sort of military guy. They said that he had a military background and he yeah. worked in Desert Storm and that he was scarred by that. And he had these dog tags around his neck that meant a lot to him. And 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 he didn't he never talked and they didn't really go into his background. He was just like the mysterious military guy. But then when season two came along, they told the whole story yeah. and they literally had. It, it, these really big budgeted flashbacks where they showed kill shot in uh afghanistan killing people really <clears throat> yeah and they showed him in war and he was like a sniper and he was like the best at his job and he would take people out and he he and his partner would 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 be like taking out these terrorists and then his partner got taken and that's the dog tags that he wears around his neck to remember his fallen partner. But then season two ends with him getting this like bloody ripped up note that says you left me to die. And as it turns out, his partner's still alive. That's Dante Fox. Nice. So in season three, he appears as a wrestler in Lucha Underground and again, I love Lucha Underground because the announcers know nothing of this. Because this is all stuff you see on the show, not stuff that the announcers know. And mm-hmm. I love yeah. Eventually they start, they learn like, oh, uh, apparently they have some sort of history together, but they don't know what you know mm-hmm. because you're the one watching the TV show, not the announcers. 
So they hate each other and they absolutely kill each other in this match. And it is nasty as hell. Yes. Which I'm kind of wondering if that was not intentional. Like, like, okay, guys, um, this is Lucha. Oh, what the fuck? Ultima, this is Ultima Lucha, Ultima Lucha 3. We don't know if there's going to be a four. We need yep. a couple of people to volunteer to do something really fucking insane. Yeah. They go at it with ladders and chairs and glass, but not like I'm going to break a bottle over your head glass, but actual glass. And you can mm-hmm. tell by the bleeding that this is actual freaking glass yeah. and falling from uh, a, a massively high uh, uh, scaffoldings and uh, barbed wire. And it, mm-hmm. most wrestling fans would go, this is fake. But then you see their faces and, and it's just like, like the, the match seemed nasty. But then when you see, like when kill shot goes through the glass and yeah. loses the first round, it's like, okay, that looks painful, but it's still like, this could be fake. I think most wrestling fans would go, Oh, this is fake. That's fake glass. This mm-hmm. is fake bar. This isn't going to be that bad. He's going to cut himself a little bit, but this isn't going to be that bad. And sure. When uh kill shot first goes through the, the glass, like, okay, that looks kind of bad, but also like, I can't see his face. He's wearing a mask. Yeah. And sure. He looks like he's in pain. He looks like he's selling it, but I don't know if he's really in pain. But then you see, like, literally, like, a minute later, he is dripping blood like a freaking fountain from his back. Oh, God, yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And I'm like, oh, shit, is that real glass? Because he is bleeding like a motherfucker. Yeah, like like a hundred holes all over his back. But then what really got me was that that the second match, the no disqualification match. And okay, here he comes. He's getting out the barbed wire. And I'm like, okay, I've seen barbed wire matches before. This isn't gonna be that this isn't gonna be that bad. But then seeing Dante Fox go into the barbed wire, he makes this face. And oh my god, it's it's an it's it's one of Eleanor's fucking faces. Yeah. Like Eleanor, don't get on that chair, you're gonna fall. And, oh, I'm on this chair. I'm so excited. I'm going to pull everything down from this table. I'm so excited. I'm 16 months old. I'm going to live forever. And she falls, and she immediately looks at me, and the face she makes is the face that Dante Fox makes when he goes through that barbed wire. Uh Uh-huh. And it just Mm -hmm. broke my freaking heart. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is all real. This is all real. Look at that face. That is not the face you make when you're selling a move. That's a face when it actually freaking hurts. And I... like these guys aren't that good of actors. Well, it's it's gotta hurt to be thrown into barbed wire, you know, and yeah. and f- from there he he just went with the pain. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It it looked like he literally could not move for a little while. Yeah, and I showed you that picture. And that picture came from my Lucha Underground fan yeah. Facebook page where someone said, I know a lot of people are saying that that match was entirely fake, but FYI, this is Dante Fox the day after they taped that episode. Look at his back. Mm-hmm. And literally there, you can see like the openings in his back. Mm-hmm. You can see skin that is hanging off of him and it is just the nastiest thing and i'm like oh yeah oh hell yeah this is all real this is 100 real and the funny thing is is that i because i don't have cable and because i don't have uh, the el ray network and a lot of people don't have the el ray network which is why lucha underground is suffering i it takes a while for me to be able to get these matches so i saw the picture of dante fox's back mm-hmm. before i saw the match so I'm like, oh, it, like I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm on the internet. Okay, apparently the Dante Fox versus Killshot match is pretty nasty. Okay, good to know. Yeah. But then seeing that picture of Dante Fox's back, oh god, this is gonna be horrible. Yeah. And it was, and it's nasty. But here's an interesting postscript to this homework. This was part one. In part two. 
they had a 20 man over the top rope battle royal for what they call one of Dario Cueto's unique opportunities. Yes. So this is actually the next episode now, right? <clears throat> yeah. The next episode, yeah. there was there was an over the top battle royal with all the people who didn't have matches, and it was for a unique opportunity. Yeah. And the winner of that battle royal was the Mac, and I love the Mac because he is a fat black guy. Uh huh. Who is all? He is overweight. But he is also one of the most daring high flyers in all of Lucha Underground. And really? Because the guy is like this big, fat, black guy. But, oh, my God, he gets into the, the top rope and he's doing Hardy Boy shit. <laughs> and also, he steals a lot of moves just for the shits and giggles, I guess, just for the hell of it. He's, for no reason whatsoever, he steals a lot of moves from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Okay, yes, now I know who you're talking about. He yeah. he basically does the stunner. Yeah. Yeah, and he'll drink the beers and like pour them on people. Yeah. But also like even though he's like this fat black dude, he'll get on the top rope, he'll jump out of the ring. He's a high flyer and it's quite impressive. So so he wins the match. And so Dario Cueto comes out and like here is your unique opportunity. In season 3 he had a match with the Mac had a match against uh, Johnny Mundo for the championship, and the Mac came so close. He was so close to being the champion, and at the last, and he like so close, and and at the last second, he was screwed over and he lost. And he's been really bitter about it since then. Mm -hmm. So Dario Cueto says, "I know you want a title." So in the next episode of of Lucha Underground, in part three of Ultima Lucha Trace. I'm going to give you a chance to win the trios championship. Basically their tag team, the tag team championship, but they do it with three people. Trios mm -hmm. championships are more popular in Mexico. So I'm going to give you a shot at the trios championship, but all of Dario Cueto's unique opportunities comes with a stipulation. So here is your stipulation. I am giving you two partners. And as it, and Dario Cueto has a thing where he gets people who hate each other into a team. Yeah. And a lot of times those those teams that hate each other end up winning, like in season one where uh, and Helico and Ivelisse and Son of Havoc, who all hated each other. Yes. won the They were the first trios championship. And I love them because they hated each other and they were champions. So Dario Cueto said, you get a trios championship match. But here's the catch. Your partners will be Killshot and Dante Fox. But see that that's I'm just jumping back to the previous one. See that's that's what I I like about wrestling. I like that the stupid storylines. Yes, Son of Havoc used to be de dating Evilise. They broke up, yep. and now she's dating Angelico, and they're they're all partners. You yeah. know, it, it's it's like yeah. it's just like a mini dynasty. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Just a, just a mini soap opera. Yeah. And so that's that was what the, makes it fun. Yeah. So that was the catch. So then in Ultima Lucha. So then in the third episode last week, mm -hmm. they had their tag team match and Dante Fox and Killshot hate each other and they're pissed off at each other and they're fighting each other on the way to the ring. But once they get to the ring, they their storyline is they're in the military and oh, my God, they worked perfectly. Because even though they hate each other, they're still in the military and they have a job to do. So, of course, they're now the trios champion. Really? Okay. Yeah. And it's incredible because they're all bandaged up. They're still bleeding a little bit and they nearly killed each other and they hate each other. But they still brought it. And now uh, Killshot, Dante Fox, and the Mac are the trios champions. And is that in the second episode? The, that's in the third episode. That's in the third episode. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So now they're the trios champions. Anyway, it's it, it, it's all in the face. All of Lucha, all of Ultima Lucha Trace is on YouTube. If you want to see it, then you can see it on YouTube. But literally see it now because that shit is coming off soon. People are literally just putting old Lucha Underground episodes on YouTube now, and they've never done that before, and so it. It's insane that 
they have lasted as long as they have on YouTube. So yeah. watch them while you can because they'll be coming down soon. Okay. I, I never thought of looking on YouTube for it because I was pulling up a lot of episodes. Yeah, but a lot of them are you. A lot of those are you click on it and they go, "We're sorry, but due to copyright reasons, oh, we cannot show you this. Simply go to this website and download this illegal, probably Russian software." Yeah, yeah. A lot of it is that. A lot yeah. of it is just like here's a picture of an episode of Lucha Underground, and here's a 48 minute runtime, so it mm-hmm. looks like an episode of Lucha Underground. I'm gonna click it and watch it, and it's just click here to watch the episode. Yeah, yeah. Most of Lucha Underground on there is that, but a, I all of Ultima Lucha Thrace is there if you want to see it, but see it now because it'll definitely be coming down soon. Yeah, yeah, and. And, yeah. and, and that's kind of how today went down. I got home with the car and it was acting up. So I came in and I, I rewatched the episode, you know, cause like that's an hour that's long enough for the car to cool off. So then the next episode just came up. So I missed the battle Royale while I was putting water in the car and checking all ah, that. Out. Gotcha. So I, yeah. I came in and I was, uh, getting ready to go back out again and caught some of Marty the Moth. I love Marty the Moth. Oh, he's amazing. He has actually retweeted me a couple of times. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. A couple of the... Uh, there's there's one or two executive producers of Lucha Underground who like, like and retweet my Lucha Underground tweets all the time, but it meant a lot to me that one of the wrestlers did. But You know it, what? Marty the Moth Martinez had a match with Killshot, and it I thought it was really bloody, so I tweeted about how great of a match it was, and he retweeted it, and I'm like, oh my god, Marty the Moth Martinez just liked one of my tweets. Like I fanboyed, I geeked out, I marked out for that. We we might be able to get him on the show. Oh, we probably could. I don't know what the fuck I'd say to him, but yeah. <laughs> we probably could. We, all we, of these indie wrestlers. Yeah, I'm really excited because, I, but I only watched half half of that match because I wanted to rewatch the movie again too. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm really excited about this Saturday. Uh, Bella and I are definitely going this Saturday. It's an indie wrestling show that's happening at the Fire Lake Arena. Oh yeah, yeah. And it features a bunch of people that Bella doesn't know, like Jack Swagger. He uh-huh. was a he was the WWE champion. I don't know, like eight years ago. Yeah. And he's from Oklahoma. He's a big deal. And so that's exciting. MVP is going to be there. Bella doesn't know who that is, but I remember him from a decade ago. He had a rivalry with Matt Hardy right before Matt Hardy was fired. And so that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alberto El Patron might be showing up, which is a big deal to me because he was in Lucha Underground for a while. Yeah. But the only reason that Bella wants to go to this is because the main event is going to feature Pentagon Jr., a.k.a. Pentagon Dark, a.k.a. Yes. Penta El Ohm, and he is in the last episode of Ultima Lucha, and it is shocking. Really? It's shocking. Bella and I were screaming at the TV. We were <laughs> shocked by the ending to Ultima, to Lucha Underground, basically. Yeah. We were shocked by it, so we're really excited to go see Pentagon Dark Mm -hmm. Uh, this Saturday. So this Saturday. So we'll be talking about that probably in the next episode of the podcast. So that's, that's good. Yeah. So that is it for homework this week. And I sincerely and honestly, so sin on seriously. Yes. A new word. I just made up excited about that. I sin on seriously hope that your hearts, minds and tight buttholes have all (laughs) been suitably opened. Ah, but don't think you're getting out of here that easily, Tomato Pants. I have no idea why I wrote that. I have no time to dwell on it. We are moving on. (laughs) Do not forget next week's homework assignment. And for next week, we are watching a half-hour video from 1997 that I cannot believe we have yet to discuss. What is that? Next week. I can't believe we haven't done it. In fact, there's still a part of me that feels that we have done it, but we haven't done it. Next week, we will be watching and discussing The Kid's Guide to the Internet. 
Really? Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm surprised by this, that we haven't done this yet. But no, we haven't. We have not done the Kids Guide to the Internet. I was watching it this morning. And uh, yeah, no, we haven't done this. It has like all these musical numbers and the kids are talking about, oh, do you don't know about the World Wide Web? My mom just <laughs> installed it on our PC at home. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Like all of that is wrong. You could go to uh, awesome websites like MTV.com. <laughs> like Jesus, Jesus mm-hmm. H Christ, is, is the internet that old? Am I that old? I anyway. There's a lot of issues. I have a lot of issues with this. Yeah, the first time I got a, a real internet connection, which is probably like around ninety four, ninety five, give or take. When small companies started popping up and act, offering you the actual, you know, I, I was on Newsnet and I used to be able to do gopher space and things like that, you know. Um, but the first thing I wanted to do is, okay, okay, I want to find the most fucked up shit that's out there. Yeah. And I was like, porn, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> I miss rotten.com. I miss I miss the shock of finding rotten.com like yeah. 10 years ago. Before it just became like a yawn. Everybody has seen this. <laughs> like rotten.com. Here's an autopsy photo of a dead person. Yes. <laughs> Here's what a corpse looks like. Oh, now we can just watch ISIS beheading videos on YouTube. It's not a big deal anymore, rotten.com. Yeah. <clears throat> Nowadays, we need to see a commercial for Mountain Dew Baja Blast before we get to see our ISIS I, beheading videos. So. I, 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 I have yet to watch one of those. You know, like see, what? people always say, like horror movies desensitize you and stuff. And no, they fucking don't. There is a okay. huge I- difference between movies and. And real life. And I just cannot bring myself to watch any of the beheading videos. Okay, I disagree with you because I have watched a, one or two of those ISIS beheading videos. And the thing is, is that I'm watching it and I'm going, okay, this has really good production value. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they have, like, cameras. Yeah. Not, not, they, they definitely have multiple cameras and someone's editing this. Yeah, and are, do they have lights? Do they have like s- lights? Is, is this a studio? Is this a set? I swear to God, all of this is fake. <laughs> it's the way that I that that I was thinking when I was watching a, an ISIS beheading video because it it has like background music and it has cuts and edits and it's like, oh my God, is this fake? And, and then you see the actual beheading happen, and, and at that point in time, I'm like, okay. I've seen Saw movies that look more realistic than this ISIS beheading video. Yes. There are effects in Cannibal Holocaust that look more realistic than that beheading. Is that beheading real? So is it the fake stuff that looks real and the real stuff that looks fake? Because that in no way looks like a beheading in my mind. I thought it would be a lot more violent and gory. In my mind, ISIS is fake. And ISIS doesn't exist. Basically, in my mind, ISIS is the plot of Iron Man 3. Yes. Because uh-huh. those ISIS beheading videos do not look realistic. Wow. That's just me. That's just me. But none of them look real. And they all have these like weird accents. Like, hey, I'm pretty sure this is just a British guy mm-hmm. talking to me. And... Uh, I'm pretty sure they have some white dude somewhere editing this. ISIS is sketchy to me. <laughs> Not sketchy, but actually sketchy. I don't know if ISIS exists, but that's my own personal theory. Mm-hmm. I know I'm getting into like Alex Jones territory here, but I'm just saying that the beheading videos look fake. Yes. Is all I'm saying. So maybe I have been desensitized, but they all look fake to me. Maybe. 
Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe see, not. see, I'm, 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 I think I would immediately just accept its realism because when I'm watching horror movies, I'm always sitting there like, okay, how did they do that? You know, and see yeah. if I could figure out how they did a particular effect or something like that, you know, and just like, oh no, that's just, that's, that's stock footage of blood squirting out of that person, which you see a yeah. lot in, in Z nation, you know, you see a yes. lot of just really fake looking, God, Bella loves a fucking show. Blood clips, you know? Yeah. So I, I, I yeah. think that it looking, an ISIS beheading video looking different to me would sell me on the realism. Yeah. Well, that's Cause good I'm Because I'm pretty good at knowing what's fake. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess the... Yeah, I guess you have a point. But anyway, in where my I'm mind, like, it's all. Where fun. I'm like, you know, I wonder if they did use the traditional squib or, or an air squib. Because air yeah. squibs are really getting popular. Yeah. Yeah.